These are the answers to homework 3D. Here are some of the definitions I would like you to know. And here are the rest. Now let's go to the questions. Number one, assuming the concentrations of one molar for all of the following solutions, use standard reduction potentials found on handout six to determine whether the following reactions are spontaneous or not. First reaction, zinc plus magnesium ion yields zinc ion plus magnesium. You need to find the two reduction potentials, one that includes zinc and zinc ion, and the other that includes magnesium and magnesium ion, and those can be found with their reduction potentials respectively of negative 0.76 and negative 2.37. To determine if the reaction is spontaneous or not, you need to reverse one of the reduction reactions to make it an oxidation so that when you add the reduction and oxidation, it exactly matches the reaction given at the top. The reaction at the top has magnesium ions as a reactant and magnesium metal as a product, which is exactly like the magnesium reduction reaction, so that's fine. But the zinc reaction is written incorrectly. We need to have zinc metal as a reactant and zinc ion as a product, so I have to switch the zinc reaction to make it an oxidation. When you reverse the reaction, that switches its reduction potential to an oxidation potential, and its sign is now changed to positive 0.76. Magnesium as a reduction still is negative 2.37. And if you add those two numbers together, you get a voltage for this reaction of negative 1.61. And this tells you data just like free energy changes do, only it's an opposite sign relationship. If it's a positive value for the voltage, the reaction how it's written is spontaneous. If it's a negative sign for the voltage, the reaction how it's written is non-spontaneous. This one is non-spontaneous. B. You have to look up the two half reactions, the two reduction half reactions in the table that will allow you to come up with this reaction here. We need to find a reduction reaction with iron and iron two, and another reduction reaction with chlorine and chloride ions. These were the two reduction reactions given, the iron reduction potential negative 0.44, the chlorine reduction potential 1.36. The chlorine reaction is written perfectly. The diatomic chlorine is a reactant and the chloride ions are a product but the iron reaction is written incorrectly because we need to have elemental iron on the left and we need to have iron two ions on the right. So I have to reverse the iron reduction reaction, make it an oxidation and its oxidation potential will now be the opposite sign of the reduction potential it will be positive 0.44. The chlorine reduction potential was 1.36. And if we add these two together, we get 1.80, which is a positive voltage, which means the reaction how it's written is spontaneous. C, the reaction of silver plus oxygen plus hydrogen ions yields silver ions plus water was a little bit more challenging. You had to find a half reaction that had silver and silver ions, which was easy to do. But the other half reaction needed to have oxygen and hydrogen ions on one side and then water on the other. So the silver reduction reaction was at the top, it was 0 0.80. But the other one that had hydrogen ions and oxygen and water was a reduction potential of 1.23. So if you found these two half reactions, the way we make them add up to the top one is we leave the oxygen reaction exactly how it's written because it already has hydrogen ions and oxygen as the reactants and as water as the products as we need. It's the silver half reaction that is unfortunately written incorrectly because we need to have elemental silver as a reactant and silver ions as a product. So if I reverse the silver reduction to make it an oxidation, its potential now becomes negative 0.80 the, oxy the oxygen in the water's uh, reduction potential was 1.23. And if we add these together, it comes out a positive number. And so therefore, this is a spontaneous reaction the way it's written. In D, we had the silver chloride as a solid, which means you had to find a half reaction that actually had AgCl solid in it. And if you scour the table, there was only one in there. It said silver chloride yields silver plus chloride. So that's where we get the silver chloride and the silver from. What's missing is the diatomic chlorine. So you had to find a reaction that had diatomic chlorine in it. And that was the one that said chlorine plus two electrons yields two chloride ions. These were their respective reduction potentials, 0.22 and 1.36. Now, can we make those two add up to the given reaction? The silver chloride is already on the proper side and the silver is on the proper side but my diatomic chlorine isn't, I have to reverse the diatomic chlorine reaction to be able to add these together to make the reaction that we're looking for. So the top reaction is fine, 0.22 is a reduction potential, but I reverse the chlorine reaction to make it 2Cl minus goes to Cl2, 
that's now an oxidation with a potential of negative 1.36. You notice here now the if we actually multiply the top of the two reactions by two, then the electrons and the chlorides would cancel out, so they would be gone, and we'd actually have the reaction we want. If you add the voltages together because they come out negative, that means this reaction is non-spontaneous, how it's written. So if you have any silver chloride precipitate uh, sitting in a beaker or something, you don't have to worry about it turning into, well, you don't get to have it turn into elemental silver and then poisonous chlorine gas. Number two, consider a standard cell composed of a silver, silver ion half cell and a copper, copper two ion half cell, A, write the spontaneous chemical reaction that takes place. So to do this, we're gonna to need to write down the two half reactions we find from handout six, and they're both given as reductions. We have a silver ion, silver reduction reaction with a voltage of 0 0.80, and a copper ion to copper reduction reaction with a voltage of 0.34. To get the spontaneous reaction, we know that the voltages have to add up to be positive, and one has to be reversed to be an oxidation. So therefore, you always keep the higher reduction uh, potential reaction because that's the more spontaneous reaction. So the silver reaction gets to be kept as reduction, and the one that has a lower reduction potential is not as spontaneous, so it gets reversed to become an oxidation. So the copper half reaction must be reversed. So the silver reaction is written perfectly. I reverse the copper half reaction to make it an oxidation. I change the sign of its potential. And now I have a reaction that's going to be spontaneous because I know these voltages will add up to make a positive number. A says, what's the spontaneous reaction? So I'll do that first. To add my oxidation and reduction half reactions together, I have to make sure the electrons gained and lost are equal. So I'm going to multiply the silver half reaction by two. And if I do that, the two electrons on each side will cancel out. And the spontaneous reaction is two silver ions plus copper yields two silver plus copper two. <clears throat> B, what is the standard voltage for this cell? All we have to do is add the reduction and oxidation standard potentials together. So 0 0.80 plus a negative 0.34 gives us a voltage of 0.46. C, what's the anode and what's the cathode? The silver reaction is undergoing reduction. Silver ions going to silver as a reduction. And wherever is the reduction, that's going to be the cathode. So silver must be the cathode. And whatever one you reverse becomes the oxidation. So the copper going to copper two ions is oxidation. And so the piece of metal in that reaction is going to be your anode. D, do the electrons flow from silver to copper or from copper to silver? So look at the two reactions that are actually occurring. Copper is turning to copper two ions and giving up two electrons. So the electrons leave the copper. Where are they going? The electrons are coming to the silver. So we would say the electrons flow from copper to silver through the external wire. D, what's the line notation for this? We wanna write our anode first, then one line, anode solution, then two lines, cathode solution, then one line, cathode. So the copper is the anode, we write copper. One line, it's in contact with a copper two solution that's one molar. Two lines, because now that solution is separated from another solution by only a salt bridge. Silver ions, one molar and then one line, it's connected to the cathode, which is the silver. Number three, consider the standard cell composed of a gold, gold three ion half cell and a magnesium, magnesium two ion half cell. A, determine the spontaneous chemical reaction. So we need to look up the two uh, reduction potentials for silver, silver three, and magnesium, magnesium ion. The silver three reduction potential was 1.50, and the magnesium was negative 2.37. To determine the spontaneous reaction, whichever reduction potential is the higher positive value, that will be the spontaneous reduction, and the other one has to be reversed. So the gold reaction will be a reduction, the magnesium reaction will be reversed, and we change its oxidation potential sign to a positive value of 2.37. To get the balanced equation, we have to make the electrons gained and lost equal, and in this case, because we have a three electron change and a two electron change, you have to find a common multiple of six, so I'm going to multiply the silver half reaction by two and the magnesium half reaction by three. That'll give me six electrons on each side, which will cancel out. And so your balanced equation will be two gold three ions plus three magnesium atoms yields two gold atoms plus three magnesium ions. To get the voltage for this, we just have to add the reduction potential and the oxidation potential. And if you add those together, you get 3.87 volts as the voltage for this galvanic cell. C, uh, which metal is the anode, which is the cathode? 
So in this case, gold is actually being reduced. So reduction occurs at the cathode, and so therefore gold is the cathode. And the magnesium reaction is the oxidation. So because magnesium is being oxidized, the piece of metal in that reaction is the anode. D, which way do the electrons flow from gold to magnesium or magnesium to gold? If you look at the two half reactions that are actually occurring, the magnesium is turning into magnesium two ions plus electrons. So that means the magnesium is giving up electrons and the electrons are being added to the gold ions. And so therefore we would say the electrons flow from magnesium to gold. Number four. Oh, we had one more question, sorry about that. What is the line notation for the cell? You would write the anode first, which is the magnesium one line, the anode solution, which is the magnesium positive two ion solution plus one is one molar, two lines, copper, uh, the silver, th uh, gold three solution, then one line, gold solid as the cathode. Number four, find the missing reduction potentials to fill out this chart. And so if you look on handout six, you can find the reduction potentials for chlorine, for AuCl4, and for NO3 minus. They are respectively 1.36 volts, 0.99 volts, and 0.96 volts. A, what substance from the above list is the best oxidizing agent and what is the best reducing agent? Oxidizing agents are what get reduced and the best oxidizing agent is the one that's most spontaneously being reduced. So that'll be whatever reaction here has the highest positive reduction potential. And that's the top one. And the reactant there is permanganate. And so the permanganate has to be the best oxidizing agent because it has the strongest tendency to be reduced. What's the best reducing agent? Well, that's going to be whatever tends to be oxidized the most. So you have to go to the least positive reduction potential. That's the one at the bottom, the 0.96. And oxidation is the reverse reaction. So if you reverse the reaction, you would then have the most spontaneous oxidation reaction. And so what would be reacting then? It's that NO. That's the product in that last reaction because if you reverse it, it becomes the reactant. So the best reducing reagent would be nitrogen monoxide. B, will permanganate oxidize metallic gold? These questions all seemed a little bit challenging at first, but if you can translate them into simpler English, they're all of a sudden they're, become, they're gonna become really easy. Instead of using fancy verbs like oxidize, just say, will permanganate react with gold? So you're trying to figure out if the reaction of permanganate and gold is spontaneous or not. So you want to add two potentials together in which the permanganate is a reactant and the gold is a reactant. So look at the very first reaction at the top. Permanganate's on the reactant side. That's where you want it. The voltage for that, 1.51. Where do you find gold in here? It's in the second reaction, right? But where is it on? It's on the product side by mistake. So you have to reverse the second reaction to put gold on the reactant side. If you do that, the potential changes to negative 1.50. All you do is you add those together. So for putting permanganate on the reactant side, 1.51 volts. For putting gold on the reactant side, negative 1.50 volts, this adds up to 0 0.01 volts. That's a positive number. That reaction will be spontaneous. That means permanganate will react with gold or more fancily, permanganate will oxidize metallic gold. C, will metallic gold reduce nitric acid? Let's change the fancy verb there to a more simple one. Will gold react with nitric acid? So you wanna make a reaction where gold and nitric acid are both on the reactant side. So once again, gold is in the second reaction, but it's actually on the product side. So we're gonna to have to reverse it and switch the potential to negative 1.50. Where's the nitric acid? It's in the fifth reaction, the very bottom, and it's the nitric acid is the hydrogen ions plus the nitrate. It's already on the reactant side, so we'll leave its potential 0.96. Just add those numbers together. Negative 1.50 and positive 0.96 comes out negative 0.54 volts, negative value, therefore non-spontaneous. D, will nitric acid oxidize metallic gold in the presence of chloride ions? So translating again, will nitric acid react with gold when chloride ions are present? So nitric acid, will it react with gold plus the, the chloride ions? So once again, the bottom reaction has the nitric acid on the reactant side, which is perfect. That voltage is 0.96. Now we have to get it to react with gold with chloride ions. So it's not the second reaction, it's the fourth reaction. Look on the product side, gold plus chloride ions. 
If I reverse that, I'll put the gold and chloride ions on the reactant side. I change the voltage to negative 0.99. And when you add those voltages together, you get a negative number. So therefore, this is a reaction that will not occur. E, will metallic gold reduce pure chlorine in the presence of water? Translating, will gold react with chlorine? So gold is in our second reaction. It's unfortunately on the product side. We have to reverse that to put gold on the reactant side. And that voltage now becomes negative 1.50. Where's chlorine? Chlorine is in the third reaction. It's already on the reactant side. That's perfect. We leave its voltage 1.36. Add those two together. This comes out a negative number. Therefore, this reaction will not occur. You can therefore say metallic gold will not reduce pure chlorine gas in the presence of water. F, will chlorine oxidize metallic gold if chloride ions are present? So will chlorine react with metallic gold when chloride ions are present? So the reaction for the chlorine is the third reaction. It's already on the reactant side, 1.36 volts. Where's gold with chloride ions? That's the fourth reaction. They're on the product side. You have to reverse that to make them the reactants. That changes the voltage to negative 0.99 when you add 1.36 and negative 0.99, you get a positive voltage. Therefore, this reaction is spontaneous. So therefore, gold will ox or chlorine will oxidize metallic gold if chloride ions are present. The final one, will permanganate oxidize chloride ions? So will permanganate react with chloride? Permanganate's in the top reaction. It's already on the reactant side. We'll use that reduction potential of 1.51. Where are chloride ions in here? They're in the third reaction but they're on the product side. So you have to reverse that reaction to get the chlorides over on the reactant side. That changes to negative 1.36. So if you add 1.51 and a negative 1.36, that comes out a positive voltage. Therefore, permanganate will oxidize chloride ions. This will be a spontaneous reaction.